So how you doing these days with the new Aussie recordings? Uh, I'm doing okay. We're both maybe about halfway into it. Right on. So we got a lot of lot of music and uh, don't really have any final vocals yet or or anything, but we're just write, writing the songs and you know experimenting and trying things. Were you guys recording this in Aussie's basement? Yep. How's it in the Aussie land? Good. You know, the last album we did as Beverly Hills House Studio, and since then he sold that house. So we're actually in a brand new studio, and this is the first project there. So, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a trial and error thing, breaking the studio in, but it's, it's uh, working out quite, quite nice. So you co-written um, a lot of the hits of Ozzy's new uh, Black Rain album that just came out there uh, not too long ago. How's it right with yeah. Ozzy? It's excellent. He's, um, you know, we really established sort of a trusting kind of relationship, and it's always difficult to co-write with someone else at first because it's really, you know, almost like a marriage. you got to be prepared to tell somebody that their idea sucks. Or you have to be ready to listen and hear that your idea sucks from somewhere else so, or from someone else. So it's a little, little difficult, you know, and you, you, you feel naked a lot of times just, just for the fact that, um, you know, it, it only gets better if you're ready to listen and accept that it could be, that the idea could be better, the song could be better. And as well, you have to be prepared to tell the other guy that. And in my case, I mean, in Black Rain, uh, you know, here I am, basically, you know, a nobody telling Ozzy, yeah. the first artist, you know, that I don't like one of his ideas and it's not any good and we should, we should, we should make it better. So, you know, it, it was, it, you know, and just, just the same. I mean, I thought I had lots of good ideas and he would come in some days and say, I don't like that, let's change it. And, you know, I would have to uh, you know, accept it. And usually almost every time we came to a compromise that both of us liked, and just as we built each song, you know, we just gained more and more trust for each other's ideas and, and um, you know, opinions. And, and so now on this album, it's definitely a lot easier. So, so, Kevin, how did you get into the Aussie family, like, in a sense? Like, does well, you just come in? No, no. Well, I mean, kind of, kind of through, through the back door, I guess, in a sense that, you know, most of the sort of working environments that I've been in are pretty close. You know, the guy before Ozzy worked with at a really tight unit, and Ozzy does as well. And Sharon and Ozzy, they don't hire a lot of people. You know, Ozzy's assistant was the same guy for about 25 years or 27 years, something like that. Tony Dennis. And once they find, yeah, Tony. Once they find people they like, you know, they keep them. And if they get somebody they don't like, they almost instantly fire them. And it could be a day, it could be a month, it could be a year, but they, you know, try to sort of do them fairly fast. So. Basically, my introduction to that camp was um, I'd done lots of work. Uh, you know, I had a few credits to my name, but one of my good friends, David Frangioni, uh, was building Ozzy's studio in his Beverly Hills house. So Ozzy didn't really have a lot of room at that studio, so the drum room was quite small. He was worried about it sounding good enough, uh, so David asked me just to drop by, set up some drums and mics, mic it up, show Ozzy how good it could, could sound. So that was kind of my first introduction to him, and I, I went, went by the, the studio and set up, and then he came in for about 15 minutes and said, yeah, sounds okay. Hmm. Um, not, not you know, blown away or, or anything like that, but, um, uh, you know, he, he kind of listened, and I met him, and then a little bit by little bit, you know, the Osborne themselves would need sort of a studio guy there, so they'd call me in to do a day here, a day there, um, and then uh, all of a sudden it was time to do an album, and uh, Bob really liked working with me, so they asked me if I wanted to sign up. Does Zach Wild participate much in the productions? Uh, Zach's obviously a very big part of the music. Um, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd say as any guitar player does. I mean, every musician, you know, sort of has an opinion and can contribute to the production. Um, so definitely, and Zach, you know, being the brilliant guy that he that he actually is, I mean, he definitely has always an opinion. <laughs> for sure. So, you know, I and I always listen to him. I mean, I, I really have a lot of respect for him, so I'm going to listen to anything he says. You know, most of this stuff, you know, production happens sort of after he was done his stuff, you know, his parts and that sort of thing. So, so 
he wasn't active right to the very end, but definitely in the, in the early stages, he was a very big part of how that, that album sounded. So, so I read on the internet you were born in Saskatchewan, Canada? Yep. Then now you're living in the California area, is that correct? Well, actually right now I'm living in Las Vegas. Las so Vegas. I'm, actually, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just driving from California back home. And for this album, I'm kind of going Monday to Friday in L.A., and then on the weekends I'm just driving. So, so you're not you're so not sleeping. LA, you're not sleeping in Ozzy's uh, basement, basically. Well, I'm on Monday to Friday. I'm sleeping in the guest house. Ah. Um, you know, hanging hanging out there. And then then I, you know, when I was first introduced to those guys, I was actually living in L.A. at the at the time. So just you know, that was quite a few years back. And then just since then, I decided to move to Vegas. And and uh, he's one of the few people that you know I have to go to him and of him coming. To, to me, and everybody else, I can pretty much convince them to go to Vegas. But in his case, and he's got a great studio in his house. You know, he is Ozzy, and um, so I go to him. Any new song titles or uh, album title looked at yet for uh, the new album? Um, yeah, there's some tentative ones, but to be honest, I probably shouldn't let it out of the bag yet. I, I know. <laughs> and it may completely change. I mean, that's the thing about working with me is that, you know, it's never over until it's over. Until um, until a C comes out on, uh, you know, in, in, as a physical copy, it can change right to the end. Even though I don't want to stop, you know, the last, um, you know, bigger single that we had, uh, that changed right almost the day of the mix. I mean, we changed a couple of lyric lines, and, and um, so, you know, so I'd rather, probably rather not give any titles yet. Yeah, uh, when do you figure the album's going to be uh, finished? Um, I'm hoping the album will be done by Christmas. Wow. And it's, you know, I'm sure it'll be just because of people's schedules. It's not like we'll be working the whole time. But sometimes, you know, Ozzy has to do stuff, and his 60th birthday is coming up, so we'll be taking time off then. You know, Sharon has has a lot of, you know, stuff on, on the go. And they may have a, I think they have a Christmas, a Christmas um, uh, special coming, coming up soon. Or it's really starting to work on that, so I'm hoping that the actual music album will be done by Christmas. Adam Wakeman participating in the album much? Oh, Adam is a great guy. I love that guy. Um, he hasn't yet, but I'm definitely going to try to get him involved at some point. Uh, yeah, a, you need Adam in the album. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a very important part in the group. Yeah, that's true. For the Black Rain album, how long did that take to make? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's, it's probably, in a sense, going a little smoother this time because everybody knows each, knows each other better. Mm-hmm. I mean, the last time was a, you know, last album in Black Rain was the first time I'd work with Zach or Ozzy, and you get to know each other. And, whereas this time, we just sort of skipped all that stage, and we're comfortable with each other, and we know what to expect. Um, so the Black Rain album actually took a little bit longer. But also for many reasons as well. I mean, it took more calendar time for the fact that, um, you know, Ozzy had to break for Ozfest, had to go and do some shows, and then we had a long Christmas break. And, you know, there's, we were kind of off and on. Zach had two ring schedules with his other band he had to, had to go, go do. So uh, it took us like, probably about a, a good year of calendar time, not working time, but just calendar time. And this time, I think we're all a little more focused, and we just like to get it done a little quicker. You're getting more uh, much recognition as Kevin Jericho, you know, as a great producer. You know, I mean, you made a super album, Black Rain. I loved your work on it, the way you made it. You're getting much recognition. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I can't come complain at all. I mean, I've been lucky. You know, I worked worked with great people in my in my lifetime. So, Ozzy's gig definitely has really helped. And, uh, you know, it's weird. I, I, I thought I'd get a little more recognition out of the gate, but it's almost like it took a little bit of time for people to, uh, you know, hear that, that album and talk about it a little bit. And I'm almost getting more calls now, two years, uh, like a year and a half after that, that album, than right after that album. It seems to take a, a little bit of time for, you know, people to find and, and maybe new bands to, to listen to. Um, so... Yeah, it definitely helped me a lot, and I've, I've been really appreciative of the opportunity, opportunity I've been given by, by Ozzy and Jerry. Do you work much with In This Moment? Yeah, well, I just finished their new album, so 
so I'm, I'm looking at that, and that's just how I think it was out on September 30th. Uh, mm-hmm. So I loved working with those guys, and, and um, I'm really uh, crossing my fingers for them. I think they have a good album, and, and uh, you know, they got a great show. So I'm really hoping that things can start taking off for them this I think uh, in this moment has a future. It's uh, gonna start coming, you know, very soon. Sometimes it takes yeah. a little while to establish, you know. Yeah, and it's not really getting any easier. I mean, there's not a lot of sales these days versus like five or six years back. So it's pretty competitive, and there's a lot of artists out there these days, and it's cheaper to record them in a certain sense. So a lot, a lot of competition, but those guys are definitely putting everything they have into it, and they believe 110 percent, and they're out there on the road right now and playing every every night, so that's hope. Yeah. And uh, they got a good manager, Blasco. Yeah, Blasco's a good friend of mine. Uh, I just did some bass tracks yesterday, so uh, I just recently saw him, and that's, of course, how I got hooked up with the, with the band. Um, yeah, and Blasco's a great guy, and he looks like um, this could be, you know, a pretty major act, so it could be his first big man. Too. You and probably ten years from now, you're going to be recognized as the next Max Norman, you know, that produced "Speak of the Devil" and all those <laughs> stuff. Wouldn't you like that? I could only hope. <laughs> I mean, all all you can really do is the best you can possibly do, and let everything else take care of itself. And it's either in the cards or it's or it's not. I mean, I you know, it would be wonderful to be on the same level as those guys, but. You know, you don't think of, of it seriously yet. You just try to work as hard as you can, and, and if it happens, it does. Hey, who knows? You'll be probably working with Metallica soon. You you get to hear the Debt Magnetic yet? Yes, I have heard most of it. I haven't heard the whole thing, but yeah. What do you think of the sound quality being produced there? Um, yeah, it's, it's different. It's pretty good. The stereo, yeah, the stereo I was listening to it on wasn't wasn't great, and it wasn't in my studio or my own environment. It was hard for for me to really. Sonics and that sort of thing. Obviously, they were going for a certain sound, and I'm sure they're quite quite happy. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure, regardless of anything, they're going to sell a, a shitload of albums. So, oh yeah, they already uh, did. Exactly. So I think they're three weeks at number one or something like that. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Those guys are definitely you know the major players. So well, you'll be working for them soon, I'm sure. After they uh, discover uh, you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, you know, I mean, I'd love to. I'd do it in a second. But uh, you know, when you're when, when you're those guys, I mean, you pretty much can pick anybody that you want. So. Oh, I know. But... Um, if, if if they ever give me a call, it'd be a thrill. Well, I'm sure it would be. And uh, you know, metallica has <laughs> been you know at top of their game for a long time, opening for Ozzy in '86. You know, but you you have a you made a super great work with Black Rain. I have to thank you so much. You know the Excellent sounds. I think Black Rain is uh, Ozzy's well best album, you know, in a long time. Well, I mean, that was that was kind of our goal. Is that um, you know he really wanted an album to compete with his with his better better ones, and and really the whole goal at the start of it all was he just wanted to make an album that he liked, and that's the first thing he said to me, Kevin. I just want to make an album that I want to put on after I'm done and play it over and over again. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say I wanted to sell, you know, five million copies. He didn't say I wanted to have a, a number one hit. He just said I wanted to do something I really like, and that was our goal. And I think we accomplished it because most most of the time when he calls calls me on the phone, he's playing playing it in the background. So oh, I was going to say I appreciate the interest, and and uh, hopefully your listenership will enjoy it. Sure, when when the album is close to be getting uh, finished, you know, just just keep in keep in touch and and. Uh, you know, on the release date or, you know, shortly before or before, you know, just a month before or whatever, just give me a shout and and uh, I'll, I'll tell you how it all went. Certainly, that'd be great. Well, you know, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I kind of accept it because, you know, being Canadian, I mean, I appreciate all any, all Canadian fans and press and, and radio and, and I really like to, uh, you know, give back a little bit of my time to anybody in Canada there because, of course, it was a wonderful place to grow up and a wonderful place to live. Um, but, you know, producers, and myself included, tend to try to stay out of the spotlight. You know, it's not really about us, it's about the band. And um, I'm very happy to not do any inter- interviews, but, but in your case, uh, <laughs> I thought I'd, you know, I thought I'd give you one at least, just to keep 
all East Coast fans are, are happening. <laughs> That's great. Well, Kevin, you have a song you'd like to hear from Ozzy Osbourne? Sure. I don't know if you can play this one, but I think my favorite one on the album is God Bless the Almighty Dollar. Uh, it's the longest one, so I don't know if readers can play it, but uh, I definitely appreciate it if you could. All right. Thank you very much, Jason. Merci beaucoup. A bientôt.